Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Hart. I am the Executive Vice President and General Manager of Radio Power at NXP. I'm really pleased to be with you here at the 6G Symposium. I would, of course, have loved to have joined you in person, but today we'll be presenting virtually. Today I wanted to speak to you about NXP's vision for 6G. At NXP, we have a long history of innovation in the wireless industry. The company today came together in 2015 through the merger of NXP Semiconductors and Freescale Semiconductors. NXP spun out of Philips in 2006, and Freescale Semiconductors spun out of Motorola in 2004. Both companies have a long history in wireless uh, communications, going all the way back to mobile car radios in the 1940s through television, the early days of wireless communications, including things like you know, WCD May, LTE, now 5G. We've had uh, innovations in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, NFC, and now we're introducing UWB to the world. In every step of this journey, NXP has brought expertise in, in wireless communications to the market. The history of wireless communications really begins with the need to connect people. Voice-to-voice -voice communications began in, in the first G era in the 1980s, and they were really about connections between individuals. As we moved into the 90s, we started adding small amounts of data to the network with edge. Uh, and then really, in, in the 3G era, it, data became key to our wireless experience. It really, in the 3G, 4G era, it became about data and connecting the individual with the internet. Wherever the individual needed to be, we were connecting this network enabled that connection. Data rates increased over that period. Modulation schemes changed. We got to a very high data uh, density uh, per megahertz of, of, of spectrum. And fundamentally, we increased the experience everywhere. Today, in the 5G era, we have another step function increase in data rates. This, this enables much faster communications. We experience that in the world around us, whether it's a millimeter wave connection on a ultra high uh, data rate Verizon network here in the US or a sub six gigahertz connection using mid-band spectrum globally. The, the amount of data that's transmitted is increasing exponentially and the connection experience we're all, we're all having is, is vastly improved. 5G, however, isn't just about data as the previous sec sections were, or the previous generations were. It's not just about internet experience for the user. It's also about connecting everything. It's about machine-to-machine -machine connections. It's about automation. It's about using this, this network in a more instructive manner to improve and make bigger inroads in, in the world around us. 6G is a vast extension of that. In this instance, it will come with a, an increase in data rate over 5G up to 10x, but it will also be about advancing society. It has to be a function of what the network can do for the users rather than creating a pipe and trying to figure out what to do with it. 6G has to be driven by the industry out. Today, we're still very much in the 5G era. We're in the early stages of the 5G supercycle. Today with release 15, which came out last year, we have enabled uh, standalone 5G networks. We have enabled networks that, that work with greatly enhanced data rates, enhanced mobile broadband, whether you talk about sub six gigahertz deployments globally, or you talk about millimeter wave deployments for the highest data communications, highest data rate communications, all those things are enabled and in various forms of deployment around the world. In the next couple of years, with releases 16 and release 17, we're going to introduce in a very significant manner, ultra low latency communications. Highly reliable, low latency, point-to-point -point communications. This is a fantastic a step forward and it's going to enable things like autonomous driving and it's going to enable industrial automation and it's going to re enable in the future uh, advanced AR and VR applications for the network. Late release 16 brings in ultra low latency communications. It also uh, brings another number of other features. Release 17 extends those features and combines them with a high data rate. And so think of an ultra low latency application happening in, in next year uh, over um, uh, with, with low data rates and extre extremely high reliability. The future uh, release 17 will enable very high data rate applications uh, also to exist with low latency. So it's really an extension. This network from release 17 forward is really the framework for what we start to think about when we think about 
6G. It's the enablement for autonomous driving. It's the enablement for really interactive networks in a variety of new applications we haven't yet conceived. As we look towards 6G, 6G is really, in NXP's mind, 6G is really about ubiquitous connectivity. It's about unlimited connections. It's about building upon the 5G framework in a thoughtful way and layering in a human-like intelligence to the network and a human-like autonomy in the decision-making that happens within the network. It's about everything being connected and everything being accessible and everything being instantly responsive. But all this has to happen in a very purposeful way. And human-like intelligence needs to determine where computations happen. Do they happen at the edge of the network? Do they happen in the cloud? Are, where, how is data transmitted? Is it transmitted over the 5G pipe, 6G pipe, the Wi-Fi networks, or offloaded in some other manner? And fundamentally, this purposeful network needs to be sustainable. We're going to add, we need to add in layers of complexity. We need to, we're going to greatly increase the data rates of transmission, but we need to do this in a sustainable, thoughtful manner. We can't simply allow power consumption to grow exponentially, but we need to rein it in so it's consistent with our view of what the future should be. Finally, a 6G network needs to operate seamlessly. Whether data is transmissioned over the fundamental pipe or it's offloaded, the offloads and the transmissions need to be managed by the network itself in a very thoughtful and purposeful way. 6G really is the combination of the communications, sensing, computing, imaging, and network security for tomorrow. It's, a, it's all areas of our, of our connected world coming together. When we think about the society and the, and the digital transformation goals, you know, we really are moving from a world in which previous network generations were defined by the specifications. The industry partners got together, the mobile network operators, the equipment manufacturers, the semiconductor manufacturers, got together and thought about what their technology could do. Specs came out of that, and, and we created a network that enabled broad uh, data transmissions wirelessly. Use cases fell out of that network once it was created, and it was really a metrics-driven approach to a network deployment. As we think about 6G, we need to think about this in a different manner. We need to think about purposeful networks. We need to think about the end applications driving the network requirements and not the other way around. If we take the example of, of healthcare, in the, in the example of mobile healthcare, there's lots of different applications that could be considered. Everything from health and wellness monitoring, which is done today over you know, smart watches, et cetera, pacemakers, those sorts of things, all the way to the extreme end of remote surgery. And, and this range of use cases certainly isn't going, to be, isn't going to be accomplished through one size fits all communication, but rather a range of specifications that come from the, the application back to the network and really drive the, the uh, development for the future. All this, of course, needs to be done, coming back to our, our, our purposeful and thoughtful and sustainable way, needs to be done in an energy conscious manner that really enables the goals of tomorrow. I want to also follow up on the, on the concept of, of safety and security in the networks, because in order for our networks to be trustworthy, in order, in order for us to have confidence in using this vastly integrated and connective network of the future, we need to have confidence that transactions will happen safely. Whether we're talking about low data rate transactions for authentication, for example, a mobile wallet purchase, or you're thinking about very vast data processing tasks that happen in data centers, all these things need to be secure and protected and safe. This is enabled through a scalable compute network and, and scalable security, scalable safety is a key tenet of the, of the network of tomorrow. The other big challenge of the network of tomorrow is of course managing this inexorable rise of data traffic. We anticipate that data rates will increase, monthly data rates will increase by a factor of 100 in the, ten, in the, in, in the next decade. And if we look back at the network of today, the 5G network of today, the current network is consuming two times the power of the LT network of 10 years ago. An increase of 100x in data rates uh, cannot drive a subsequent doubling, tripling, or quadrupling, tri quadrupling of the power consumption of the network. 
and still be consistent with our sustainability goals. If we look towards the UN sustainability goals of the future, they're very much about doing more with less. It's about managing our total resources and driving down the cost and the, the consumption of our electronics and, 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 and our interaction with the world around us so that we can have a world for tomorrow. That has to be a central theme in 6G. And as such, we're, trying, we're taking steps at NXP to manage how we can best take taking steps at NXP to manage how we can best drive down power consumption of the overall system. We tend to think of power consumption or energy optimization holistically. I, in my world, in the radio power world, I tend to think about power consumption from the RF elements in the radio chain. How much power is consumed, amplifying a signal uh, for transmission, uh, receiving the signal and, and getting it ready for processing, and what can I do to drive down power consumption or increase efficiency? Over the last 10 years in the radio access layer, in the, in the RF space, we've come close to doubling the efficiency of the RF elements in a 5G network today in a conventional 2 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz application. However, the power consumption of the total network of the radio layer has increased dramatically. So 10 years ago, in order to transmit an LT signal over 20 megahertz consuming one sector, we would transmit 40 watts of, of radiated power. That would allow us to cover a range of, of roughly 25 kilo, kilometers uh, in, in the network for that sector. Today, 10 years later, in a 5G world, sub-6 gigahertz, that bandwidth has increased from 20 megahertz to 200 megahertz. It's brought with it a 10x or greater increase in data rates, but it's also brought with it a 10x increase in the amount of power that needs to be radiated per sector to maintain the same coverage area. If you radiate less power, your cell site reduces and you need more sites to, to get the same coverage for, for a city or, or a, a geography. Therefore, increases in efficiency for the radio system hasn't dri uh, has been offset by a much faster increase in bandwidth and therefore the total consumption of the network has increased. That's how we think about power consumption from an RF perspective. When we think about power consum consumption from a compute perspective, we think about Moore's Law. Today's world, right, in a, in a typical use case today, we can say that for 100 picojoules of energy, I can do 10 multiply operations. For the same amount of energy, I can transmit a fraction of a bit. Therefore, it's more energy efficient to do your computations at the farthest edge of your network versus in a central manner and transmitting data back and forth. If we think about Moore's Law of tomorrow, obviously process nodes are going to continue to shrink, and the amount of multiplies we'll be able to do in, a, um, in 100 picojoules of energy will increase by a factor of 10 or more. The amount of power it will take to transmit a bit of energy will not reduce at the same rate as Moore's Law. Therefore, going forward, it still will be far more advantageous, in fact, exponentially more advantageous to do your processing at the edge of the network whenever possible. If we think about a small example like voice recognition, today voice recognition is done through uh, over mobile networks and the voice recognition processing is done in the cloud at a data center at Google, for example. If we were to transition that action from happening in, at the core to happening at the edge, we would see a transformation in the amount of power that the network consumes. In this example, the consumption at the edge processor, whether it's your phone or your car or the base station itself, would double because it's, it's doing more processing. However, the amount of power needed to transmit data back and forth would reduce dramatically because no longer are you sending an audio file back to a data center, but you're doing the voice recognition uh, locally and all you're sending back to the data center is an address and you're getting receiving back instructions on how to, how to get to your location. At the same time, we save data, we save power at the data center, and this offset in transmitted power versus consumed power at the edge results in a 2x reduction of power in this use case, in this example, in the overall network. Taking a holistic approach to power optimization like that and layering in Moore's Law and the things we can do with advanced semiconductor technologies like gallium nitride, for example, in the radio layer will allow us to create a much more sustainable network for tomorrow. So that brings us to the concept of full dimensional coverage. And what we mean by this is the seamless end-to-end -end service of the network. 6G is no longer just about the, the radio access technology, but it's about the thoughtful decision-making, the purposeful network of tomorrow. 
deciding autonomously whether computations happen at the edge of the network or in the cloud, layering in sensing and actuating so the network is aware and perceptive of the world around it and can thoughtfully make decisions about how best to transmit data in a sustainable way. Full dimensional coverage is also about the ecosystem. It's about industry defining what the network of tomorrow needs to do, how it should be built, and how each industry partner conceives of using this network to expand their own, their own presence. Finally, full dimensional coverage is about the seamless multi-access continuity. It's about the combination of different wireless technologies to create a seamless user experience. At NXP, this seamless multi-access continuity means the combination of your 5G or 6G network of tomorrow with your Wi-Fi and your Bluetooth. It's a combination, it's a linkage with, of cellular V2X and UWB, and combining these access technologies in a thoughtful way so that the user experiences everything in a, a clean, easy, straightforward manner. Combining these, these factors is possible. We have activities underway to, to drive this together today. It really needs to be a central tenet of the network of tomorrow. And so that brings us finally to the road ahead. As I mentioned, the road ahead is about industry collaboration. It's about driving a diverse uh, set of goals and partnerships that will create this, 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 this network of tomorrow. 6G is the convergence of communication, sensing, computing, imaging, control, and security. The central themes of most semiconductor applications in the, globe, in the world today. These things are going to come together in a vibrant ecosystem, and it's supported by secure and resilient, well, supported by a secure and resilient supply chain. It's not about the mobile networks operators and the equipment manufacturers and the semiconductor vendors joining forces and defining the network tomorrow, but it's about the, the society and the industry as a whole in one voice speaking out of what the network needs to do. If we do that right, if we accomplish this, 6G will truly be a transformational experience for all of society. In conclusion, we're very much at the early stages of the 5G journey. We have a lot of roads ahead of us to build a better connected network of tomorrow, and that is going to lead us into the 6G era, where we layer on top of a fantastically connected 5G network, a purposeful and thoughtful human-like intelligence to the network that allows us to create not just a sustainable network of tomorrow, but a network of tomorrow that delivers seamless connections in a thoughtful, manageable, and sustainable way. At NXP, we're investing in every stage of this journey, and we're excited for the road ahead. Thank you.